This segment of Naperville Sports Weekly is brought to you by BMO Harris Bank. We are here at Bennett Academy on a beautiful afternoon here with Bennett Curtis of Bennett Academy of the boys soccer team. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. So last season, kind of a disappointing exit to the end of the year in the regional final and a 1-0 loss to Mount Carmel. What was kind of your mindset after that game? Were you more thinking about the next season right away or did it take you a little while to get over that? How, what was kind of going through your head after that? It was definitely a tough loss, you know, to be honest. It took a little longer to get over that season than I thought, but we were definitely excited to get into this season. I know I was personally extremely excited. So being a senior captain, did you think you had to do anything differently kind of going into this year that you've done in previous years to lead uh, a team that I wouldn't say maybe it was a disappointing season, you still had a good year, but just the, not the season you wanted, how it wanted to end? Well, for me personally, I mean, sophomore year, we had you know, Kyle Kanegi. And then last year, we had guys like Jacob Graber and Dan Moorfield. So, you know, I was always kind of looking up to the, you know, the senior leaders. So I guess now being the senior, I had to kind of assume that role. And it was a little different, but I think I was ready to step up for the challenge. Do you have any weird pregame rituals that you do out of the ordinary or normal ones? I mean, just kind of, you know, listen to the same songs every day, wearing the same socks, you know, uh, just kind of a little OCD stuff, uh, doing the same warm-ups before every game, what stuff the, like that. What are the songs, if there are a couple that are always uh, the same? Part in the USA by okay. Miley Cyrus, that's a big one. Yeah, that gets me going. It's a classic. It is. Definitely. What about foods? Anything you eat the same? No, it doesn't matter. Um, not really. Just, I usually have banana. That's... Like healthy fruit stuff like that so yeah it's good <laughs> so this season one loss so far on the year came in the best of the west tournament to friend as a captain after that loss did you have anything to say after, to your team after that one because you guys clearly responded really well was there anything that you and the captains of the coaching staff did after that one i mean really we just had to scratch that mm -hmm. that was not i've said this before that was just not Bennett academy soccer uh and we responded i could not be more proud of the way my guys responded you know we came out against oswego i think that was the next game and we just, we've been playing well ever since. And we got right back to what our core values and what you know, playing for Bennett really means. So. And you'd rather have those losses earlier in the year, obviously, than later in the year. Exactly. So yes. as a senior, what are you trying to do to make sure maybe the younger guys or just maybe some guys that you notice are looking ahead to games, make sure they're focused on this practice, this game that's coming up, not looking ahead to maybe the regional, sectional, state, anything like that? Well, and just kind of you know, make sure they take it you know, one practice at a time, one game at a time. Uh, kind of you know letting them know what I've seen and what the coaches have seen what they need to work on specifically and really just you know taking it day by day not looking too far ahead. So we're gonna get a couple perspectives on this now your perspective who's kind of the class clown of the team? The class clown oh gosh we have a couple I mean Connor Moat I'd have to say is probably the number one he's a he can definitely make people laugh. Does co is coach always okay with that or does there get a little out of hand uh... sometimes? It does not get out of hand. I mean, sometimes he's got to, you know, bring Connor back to reality now and then, but it's all in good fun. Now, conditioning. What is kind of goes into your, your maybe personal or team off-season conditioning program? Because a lot of people that don't play soccer, they know it's a lot of running, but they don't really maybe realize what it takes to be in condition for soccer. Somebody like me, I play golf. I don't run. What is the kind of the conditioning program that maybe you use or your team uses? Yeah, I mean, well, we start soccer camps in the summer, pretty much the weekend after school gets out. We're right back at it in the summer. We have multiple camps, and then, I mean, coach runs a whole training and conditioning session all throughout the month of July. And then us captains uh, run conditioning in the early part of August, just to make sure everyone's prepared. We make sure everyone knows the conditioning tests and what they need to be in soccer shape, and they have to know what to expect. And usually guys are prepared coming into the season, so. I've been to a lot of high school, college soccer games, and when it's 35, 45 degrees, raining, the fans are miserable. How are you wearing shorts and short sleeves? Is there a certain type of weather that you like to play in? Because it looks like soccer players aren't bothered by that. Yeah, I mean, I hate to play in rain, just being honest. It's probably my least favorite weather. But I mean, I also played lacrosse in the spring, and I just got to say, fall sports are so much better than the spring. It's raining so much in the spring. But I mean, yeah, the rain is probably, especially on turf, that's probably the hardest. But you know, it works. You muscle through it. If you could have season tickets to one soccer team in the world, who would it be? Oh, gosh. Uh, coach would probably hate me for saying this, but I'm a big Man City fan. He's a Man United fan. But uh, it had to be them, I'd say. What about favorite soccer player? It could be of all time. It doesn't have to be playing right now. Or it could be either one. Uh, Ronaldinho. 
Uh, I don't really Old think. FIFA days. Yeah. I remember that uh, video game, the Brazil, right? No, yeah, he's one yeah. of my favorites. I don't know why, uh, no, but I used to wear his number 80 for my club team. I, he just stood out to me for some reason. What's your favorite soccer memory? It could be playing, watching, anything. Last year we made it to, or last year against St. Vider, made it to the conference championship, or I guess that was the conference game. And we were down, I think we were down 2-0 and we came back to tie it 2-2, and then we went down 3-2, came back tight 3-3, and we ended up winning in double overtime, golden goal, Dan Moorfield had a hat trick. It was, just that atmosphere was amazing. It was probably the best game I've ever been a part of. Do you have plans to play after high school? In the I next am, level? I'm going to the University of DePaul in oh, okay. Indiana, so I'll play Division Three soccer there. And do you see yourself kind of later in life, maybe after college, still uh, in the soccer world, or after college, is it kind of done? I mean, I would hope yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think I'd love to coach. And that'd be, uh, aside from having a, you know, an actual job. But uh, <laughs> I think that'd be a lot of fun. All right. Well, good luck the rest of the season, and thanks yeah. for joining us. Thank you very much.